Hi, in this video, we'll make optimal risky portfolio on Excel. For this, we are having five stocks from five different industries. One from banking, another from retail sector, then from construction, another from FMCG, and Havels is there for consumer from consumer durables. We are having the data from past five years that is 60 months altogether and further we are having market index which is BSE 500 that is the proxy for all macroeconomic factors. So the first step to make optimal risky portfolio is to calculate returns for all five stocks. We are choosing this title line. Let's have the month details also on the right side. Now calculating SBI returns. For calculation of SBI returns, let's use a natural log formula for giving the impact of compounding. So April closing prices divided by March closing prices will give you April month return. So this is April month return, control copy, paste it to all for all others, four stocks and the market index drag it for all the 60 months so we are having the return data with us for all five stocks and the market index second step will be calculating the beta for all five stocks so beta will be using the formula of slope then it says known y's and known x so SBI returns for past five years, this, these are the known Y's and the independent variable that is market returns, these are the known X. And as market returns will be the same for all the stocks, so let's freeze market returns. Now let's use the same formula for other four stocks. So we are having beta for all the five stocks. Let's freeze the data so that we are able to see the title bar using the free spans. Now we are able to see the title bar. So beta is highest for SBI and it's lowest for HUL. HUL being the least risky stock and SBI being the highest risky stock. Then we will be calculating expected returns for all the five stocks by the CAPM formula. CAPM formula says RF plus RM minus RF into beta. So RF we are assuming it to be 6% plus beta into the market risk premium. Market risk premium is assumed to be 7.5 for Indian market. So this is the expected return for all the 5 stocks. Now after calculating expected return we need to prepare the covariance matrix. So going on to data, data analysis, let's prepare a covariance matrix for all these five stocks. So covariance matrix, input range. Input range is the return data of all the five stocks. So this is the return data of all the five stocks. This we have selected. Labels in the row, yes. The labels are there in the row. Name of the companies are mentioned in the first row. Output range. Where you want the output? Output we want at J69. So we want the output over here. So let's press OK. So the covariance matrix is there. As the covariance matrix is half filled, so we'll be copying all the values of covariance matrix pasting on the right side then copying the matrix there and then coming back again to the covariance matrix first cell then using the function paste special then going on and selecting skip blanks and transpose and then press ok so now my covariance matrix in total is there with us so this data is not required. Let's delete this data. So now the covariance matrix is full covariance matrix is there with us. Now we need, the next step is 
to border the covariance matrix so bordering will be done by weights as of now we are not knowing the weights so we use same weights for all the five scripts the total of weights is 1 now horizontally also putting the weights let's use the formula of transpose and horizontally we can place the weights by the formula of transpose and let's press control shift and enter to have all the values so then now the weights are there so to prepare a bordered covariance matrix let's use the sum product formula and have the value for covariance matrix multiplied by weight for each and every column and sum it together so sum product this is the weights that needs to be multiplied by the covariance so the weights will be multiplied by the covariance and then again summed and will be receiving the sum total of all the columns so will be freezing the weights because they will be the same for other columns also so dragging this formula for other four columns now the variance of the portfolio will be the sum total of all these columns together and the standard deviation will be calculated by doing the square root of the variance square root of variance and variance is the sum of these sum product values and as the variance was calculated from monthly return values we need to multiply it by 12 to get the annual variance and further the annual standard deviation so this is the annual standard deviation now expected return of the portfolio can be taken out by multiplying individual expected returns by the weightage in the portfolio so dmart returns multiplied by the weightage of dmart lnt returns multiplied by weightage of lnt and now havels return multiplied by the weightage of havels so this is expected return of the portfolio after we have calculated the expected return and standard deviation we will be calculating the sharp ratio of the portfolio as when we make an optimal risky portfolio we need to maximize the sharp so sharp ratio is nothing but return per unit of risk so this is the return of the portfolio we'll be taking excess return in the numerator so let's subtract risk free rate of return and then divided by the risk that is the standard deviation so this is the sharp ratio for the portfolio as i already mentioned that we need to maximize the sharp ratio to get optimal risky portfolio so maximization will be done by applying solver so let's apply solver the solver the objective is to maximize the sharp ratio so this is mentioned here maximum function is selected by changing cells which cells we need to change we need to change the weightage so this is selected further adding constraints what constraints which you like to add first that the sum total of all the weights should be equal to 1 and second that all the weights should be greater than or equal to 0 we will not be taking weightage that is negative that means no short selling is required 
now after having these two constraints let's solve yes keep the solver solution so we are having the sharp ratio to be 0.328 so let's reduce the decimal places for all values so the standard deviation comes out to be 26 percent expected return is 14 percent and sharp ratio is 33 percent 0.33 here let's also reduce the values for weightage also reduce the decimal places for weightage so now it's mentioning initially the assigned weights were 20 percent for all stocks now after using the solver and maximizing the sharp ratio the weightage has changed and now this is the optimal risky portfolio that has been created out of these weightage so the weightage for sbi is 24 percent dmart has not been assigned any weightage lnt has 48 percent weightage 7 percent weightage is given to HUL and Havels is having 22 percent weightage so now this is the optimal risky portfolio wherein the returns are 14 percent and standard deviation is 26 percent with a maximum sharp that is 0.33 thank you so much